Terraria has been a large part of my life ever since it released on the Xbox 360 when I was a kid. I never really got far, I mainly would just go mining, get some stuff, and then go try and beat Skeletron, but would end up failing miserably. So, when I saw Terraria was on sale for $1, I copped it in a heartbeat, and challenged myself to beat Skeletron in 7 days, and if I failed, I would live in shame knowing a floating skeleton head had defeated me, which is something I would never be able to live down. So, I opened the game and got to making my character. I did the run of the mill explore your options thing and settled on making Goku from Dragon Ball Z because he's like really strong, you know what I'm saying? Get it? Because he's like a Saiyan? Ah, forget it. Anyways, we created the world which, by the way, if you wouldn't mind doing the thing I named my world after, that would be greatly appreciated. We are almost to our goal of 5,000 subscribers. Anyways, we opened the world for the first time and we were greeted by a strange man named Connor, who was our guide in this strange new place. For most of day one, I mainly just got acclimated to the keybind, since I have never really played Terraria on the PC before, so it took a little bit to get used to. After I figured out some of the keybinds, I began making a base of operations where I could leave Connor to do his Connor things in his Connor cave. But, I also needed a place to hide out in since I remember when I used to play that the knights in Terraria would get pretty brutal, so if I didn't have a base to protect myself with, I would be toast. I finished on my base for the night and then prepared for the horde of enemies that was about to come, and to be honest, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Sure, there was a bunch of baddies outside my house, but they weren't crazy strong or anything, and it definitely wasn't as hard as I remember it from when I played on the Xbox 360. After a bit of protecting my base, I saw a shooting star that landed near me, so I decided that I'd go and try and grab it, but I didn't realize how low my HP bar was, so I ended up walking out and dying to a floating eyeball. But after what felt like an eternity, daylight finally blessed the world that I created, and I decided that I was going to try and go mining to get myself some better gear, so I could fend off enemies a bit better. I spent the rest of day one mining a giant hole to try and find some better materials, but ended up only getting copper and stone. I also ended up getting into an underground boxing match in the process of mining, and ultimately lost since I'm not Mike Tyson. On day 2, I decided to start expanding my base a little bit so I could have more room and possibly get myself a new NPC, which I was looking for a specific one that had bombs for sale, but that was for a project I was going to do later. As of right now, I needed a base that was a little bigger so I could have more storage room and more NPCs. After I finished the base and it was day again, I decided to go mining, but this time I was going to go for a smaller hole so I could dig down even faster. After digging down for a while, I needed more wood for the platforms that were helping me get up and down so i went exploring a little bit before i got wood and eventually made my way back down which i then found a giant cave system which i explored for the rest of day two i decided to spend all of day three mining and i also found this weird ghost pet thing that follows me around but to be honest i have no idea where i got it from or when i got it and i still couldn't find it while i was editing I kept digging down until I found a huge pool of water, and then I accidentally fell in it. I tried my hardest to escape, but to be honest, I really should have paid attention in those swimming lessons. Anyways, I continued exploring the cave system for the rest of day 3 and decided to call it after I went back to the surface. Since I spent most of day 3 mining, I wanted to explore the surface a little more to see what I could find, and I ended up stumbling across a snowy wasteland that had a really deep cave that I decided to explore. The deeper I went in the cave, the bigger it seemed. It felt like it was twice the size of my first mine, so I kept digging deeper because it had a lot of valuable items that I really needed. I also found a weird purple thing that I tried to break, but it wouldn't let me mine it. So, I finished exploring the cave and then I went back up to my base and expanded it again in hopes of getting the bomb trader I really wanted. And to my surprise, I actually got him. But I'm sure you're probably wondering, Delta, why do you need bombs? And I'll tell you the two reasons right now. The first reason is because it allows me to dig down faster in deep waters without drowning. And the second reason is it allows me to break demonite ore so I can get it before I'm supposed to. This was like a 5 head strat I came up with when I was younger on the Xbox, so I decided it would be helpful if I wanted to beat Skeletron as fast as possible. I woke up the next morning and realized it was already day 5, and I still didn't have the strong items that I wanted yet, so I started looking for 3 items I really needed. The first one was I needed stronger armor. The second one was I wanted to go find wings, and 
The third one was I needed to get a better weapon. So I spent a long time mining for better ore and managed to get myself a good set of armor and weapons. So I crossed off two items I needed on my list. And now the only thing I needed was wings. So I'm sure you know where this goes. I took to the skies a vast ocean of water vapor and oxygen. And sometimes it's even complemented by the hairspray your mother uses. I explored the cloud that I found, but alas, there was no wings to be found, so I started to make a path to a different place, but all of a sudden I was bombarded by Heaven's Defenders, or or not really, I, I don't really know what a harpy is, but either way, they got some good aim. Anyways, after exploring the sky, I decided the ground should also get some exploring as well, since I didn't even know where the Skeletron Church was, so I started walking, and walking, and walking, until I finally found where he was hiding. I started lighting up the church with some of my torches and began building my battlefield that I wanted to fight Skeletron on. I wanted to give myself some hopping room so I removed some of the floating islands and decided that I was going to finish the challenge right here and right now. And let's just say, we definitely weren't ready yet. After the failed attempt, I called it a day there and decided to pick it up on day 6 where I would prepare my final setup before making the last ditch effort for day 7 being the final fight between me and Skeletron. So that's what I did on day 6, I prepared, I mined for better gear and I explored the vast unknown caves that I hadn't explored yet. I went to the most dangerous areas that I didn't go to before because if I couldn't get better gear, the challenge would be a fail and I was not about to let that happen. I found a minecart track that helped me get around in the snowy area and got me a lot of good loot. And I also went to the corrupt zones to try and get myself the demon eye ore that would get me a really strong weapon, but I accidentally awakened the world eater. But he's a boss for another day, a problem for another time. After I finished mining in the corrupt zone, I went back to my base to see what I could make with my spoils. I ended up making a demonite axe since I didn't have enough for a sword. But either way, it did more damage than all the weapons I had. But this time, I was ready for war, so I closed the game and planned for what I would do on day 7 to defeat Skeletron. I woke up the next morning and began building my arena. I needed to make a place that I could get some high ground, and I needed a place to put fireplaces so I could amp my passive healing. I spent a long time building up the battlefield because I needed a lot of space to not only move up and down, but I also needed room to go side to side so I could make sure I could dodge all of... Skeletron's attacks. I also spent a couple hours lighting up the whole place so that I wouldn't miss the attacks if they were coming at me. After Night Struck, I decided to give the Skeletron boss one last shot. Since it was already late in the real world, I figured this would be my last chance. So I activated Skeletron, and this is how it went. I need to get the high ground immediately. The health potions only heal 50, so I gotta keep that in mind. seconds until my next potion. Set him on fire, please. Dude, call me Hawkeye. I ain't missing. He's at 1,000 HP right now. Get him, Abigail, yeah! It's kinda hard. We're, we're almost into the uh, single digit hunt, uh, the, the triple digits. Dodge that narrowly. We are in the triple digits now.
I got one. I got one. One of his hands is down. That's actually really good. If I play the long game here, I might be able to win. And then get more. I, I need to get more health first before I go in with the axe. Alright. Come down here. I won! Let's go! I, I, I did it. What did I get? And that was it. We finally beat Skeletron and beat the challenge. I had a lot of fun for the past seven days of playing Terraria. Well, by now it's probably not seven days, it's more like three weeks because it took me a while to edit, but hey, it was really fun. And if you guys like this type of content, please make sure to go down, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and I might just do another week and maybe we can get some of my friends on. So yeah, if you guys could do that, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. We're almost to 5,000 and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.